Hey, we're in the pack mule garage today, and we're going to talk about installing your pack mule. Some tips, tricks, and uh, ways to simplify and know if your hitch and your pin and your pack mule are installed right and if they're compatible. First thing that we're going to do is have you uh, plug the pin and lock into your hitch to confirm that the size and spacing works and to also show you the details on how it all goes together. So before you even install your pack mule, take the pin, take your lock or your T-handle cotter pin if you bought that for your scout, and let's just stick it in the hitch. Okay, on this lock, you can tell that uh, the chimney is gonna go over the pin and then it's gonna couple with this chamfer right in the middle. You wanna see that happen inside of your hitch. So let's see how that, that works out. Put your pin in, passenger side, and then your lock in on the driver side. The chimney on the lock will go in to the receiver hitch and then you can look inside and see, yep, everything's in there, everything fits, it looks good. All right, now that we know that the pin and lock set fit perfectly, I'm gonna show you how best to install your pack mule, whether it's your Scout, Swayback, Ridgeline, or your original. Uh, the thing I like to do first is put the pin and lock on the bumper, and then it's easiest to hold the pack mule to your chest like this, Use your knees as a little leverage point, and then I can just tilt it forward, set it right into the receiver hitch. One thing you can do before you actually install it all the way, just to make sure the threads are clear. My pin threaded in all the way. That means my threads are clear. I didn't get any junk from shipping or something else that, that might be in there. Visually line the hole up. Check with my finger, but don't move it while your finger's in there because you will pinch the dickens out of your finger. Everything looks good. Now I'm gonna hand thread it in. Thread the pin in, pop the lock on, click, pull on it, that looks good. Finish threading it the rest of the way. When you go to thread your pin in, know that the tolerances are really tight on the pack mule, the pin, and the hitch. So it's important that as you go to thread the pin in, know that you may have to move the pack mill around a little bit. You're gonna hand thread the pin in and you don't wanna force it because you could cross thread it. So if you get some resistance, you may need to lift it a little bit, push it down one way. As you'll see in the next part of this video, there's ways you can move it around to be able to clear up those tolerances and make sure that that pin threads in nice and smooth so you don't have any resistance. Once you get it threaded halfway in and you're ready to tighten it up with the ratchet, pop that lock on, snug it up tight and hit the road. Thread the pin in, you may have to move it in or out just slightly. I normally will use my knees or my legs to kind of move it. And, and the reality is that if the pack mule is left or right one way when you're trying to put it in, it's, you're gonna, you might have to move it some so that it's square so everything comes together. You also don't want somebody leaning on it. You don't want to have a heavy object on it because it's gonna move it and make it difficult. So uh, the pack mule can, while it's loose, can still move left or right and tilt and all those sorts of things. And if it's pushed to one side too much, the chimney can hit the outside of the receiver hitch. So when you're trying to put the lock on, you go, oh man, it feels like my pin's not long enough. What you need to do is just loosen your bolt up just a little bit, move the pack mill around until that lock pops in. You might have to lift the driver's side or push down on the driver's side a little bit or move it, to the, move it forward or back just a hair to get that to pop in. But move it around just a little bit while the, pack, while the pin is still loose in the hitch until that lock pops in place. Remember, you know that it fits because before you installed the pack mule, you were able to put the pin and the lock in there together and saw how that chimney needs to go into the receiver hitch. So just takes a little movement. Once you figured it out and you've done it a couple times, it becomes second nature when you install it and it goes real quick and you just pop it all in and you're ready to go. Use my ratchet and socket. You can use pliers or channel locks, but it's not going to be a fun experience. The ratchet allows you to just move it in it's also got a deep throw, so if you've got a chain stay or something there, it's gonna be able to extend over it. And make sure you keep that ratchet and socket with you on the road. So if you get to your destination, you find you need to take the pack mule off, you've got the tool to make that handy. But also you might find that after 500 or 1,000 miles, you might have a little bit of play in the pack mule. Just in the same way that when you're pulling a trailer, you're gonna check your safety chains and your cotter pin and your hitch and your coupling and all those things to make sure that's safe, you wanna check your pack mule. You wanna check the load and make sure that's secure and you wanna check that pin and just make sure that through the vibration and the differences in road terrain that you're driving on, that that pin's still threaded in tight and secure. Okay, everything's locked in place, feels good. Remove my key, double check the lock one more time. Once I load it and I get a little bit down the road, I might give it another tighten, but you can see our anti-wobble system's locked in place. You're ready to go, you're ready to load. If you bought the Scout without the lock, you're gonna get this T-handle and cotter pin. 
it works the same way and that it's going to slide over the pin and into the receiver hitch. So you're going to install the pin, move the pack mill slightly if you need to, and then you're going to install your cotter pin in place. Finish tightening the bolt and pull on it to make sure it's all secure and you're set. All right, you're at your destination or you've returned from your trip and you're, you've decided you need to remove your pack mill. Let's walk through those steps so we see how to do it the proper way. In most cases, if it's tightened up and your anti-wobble's set, you're not gonna be able to remove your lock. Uh, it, there'll be too much tension on the pin and the lock and the receiver hitch to be able to remove it. So you're gonna loosen it just a half turn. Now there are cases, and on this forerunner, when this is tightened up, I can remove it. Turn the key a quarter turn and I can pull it off. So if you can do that, that doesn't mean that something's wrong. Uh, but in other cases, you wanna loosen it just a half turn. So we're just gonna break it loose. That's it. We've done a half turn. Now everything you can see is moving around on the pack mule. We can turn the key a quarter turn and remove the lock. What we don't wanna do is back that pin out too much and start pulling on the guts of the lock because then it activates our anti-theft uh, mechanism and the locking mechanism wraps around the pin to prevent you from stealing your own pack mule. Uh, go ahead and set your lock down on the bumper. Once you've loosened the pin a few times, it's probably loose enough to hand thread. So now we're just gonna back it out. I like to slide it out just a little bit, leave it there, thread my pin in, pop my lock back in place so that they're all together when I'm done. Lean it using your knees. And then you can hold it with one hand and carry it, or you can hold it as I showed you earlier and go put it on your hitching post and you're done.